five things I really miss about Ghana. And of course, I've also made a list of five things I really don't miss about Ghana. So shoot me. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Ambassador Vix. And I am back with another awesome video on this channel. We talk about the positivity about Africa and Africans. In this episode, we are going to talk about a unique experience experienced by a wife lady who visited Ghana. Dan. Dan is a musician and also a music producer who visited Ghana and she had her mind blown in ways that she didn't expect. The question is, what does she like about Ghana and what is she happy to have left behind? Let us find out. For the hope purpose of we ending this episode on a good note, let us tackle what she dislikes about Ghana. Number one. You guys are so dangerous. You fully packed all the trucks and vans with goods, animals, or people, or worse, a combination of the three. In Ghana, we all can see this. You see people overloading, people sitting at the trunk of the cars, and also eating animals to the extent that goods and cows are found at the trunk of cars. And this is something which is unacceptable in Ghana. According to them, she finds this very dangerous. Not even like this is dangerous, but this destroys the roads, puts majority of the people at risk, and it's one of the causes of road accidents in Ghana. This is not something that we need to motivate people for them to do. What is happening to our laws? The law enforcement. This is something that we need to discuss another time. To me, we need to be stricter in our law enforcement, and those perpetrators should also be brought to book and punished because something of that sort should be encouraged in the country. Number two. One minute he's yelling at me and wants something small for the boy, and the next minute he's my best friend and tells me he has a chicken farm and likes to do business with me. The duty of you is to stand by the road and do the necessary checks. That's not a time for you to multitask to strike in deals of business with people, and that is something that we need to do. I'm not saying that all police officers in Ghana are doing that. The bad conduct of the few people are staining the you know, the positive image of the whole police force. This is something that we shouldn't be encouraged. The police themselves need a reformation in the country and it's something that I am stressing on that. They need a reformation in the country. According to them, this is not healthy because comparing the Western world to Africa or Ghana, there's a vast difference in how they are operating. Number three. Oh my God, I was seriously suffering from brain damage by now, you know? Of all the times I bumped my head on the car window. The states of roads in Ghana. I paid attention to the road being displayed by them in the video. Looking at the road, it wasn't a major road. All right. This road can be found in some corners of a village or maybe a town. I'm not saying that. I mean, because of that, it's an excuse. No. Even when, when you have to compare the, our main roads to those of the Western world, our main road is very bad. And as a 21st century second decade, most of Ghana's rules are dilapidated. And according to the leaders, doing their best to make sure that those bad rules are being faced and then new rules are being constructed. That is why at the moment, there are major projects going on. When you go to Amasaman, you know, Opokwasi, when you go to Aspect of Tapa, when you go to few other places, the government is doing their best. That is their best to construct the roads. But then it is not our best. But, you know, we are pushing for you know, more infrastructure development, those that need to be fixed are supposed to be fixed and all that. But down, this can be found at a corner of a village or something. All the same, Ghana has bad roads. Don't forget that this is Africa. Nothing is perfect here. Just as in your country, nothing is so perfect there. All right, let us respect that. Four. Ghanaians spend at least a third of their lives on haggling. You love it. I don't have time for this. Time is money, you know. It's pretty funny. According to them, Ghanaians spend one third of their lives haggling. Haggling is um, basically pushing for a reduction in price. You see, when you go to the Western world, because they shop in big marts and all that, most of the commodities have prices on them. So there's no way you can push for price reduction. But when you come to Africa, unless these malls and shop rights, the normal stores around the world, there's nothing like price being embroidered on the commodities. And so therefore, you need to use your bargaining power to bargain to making sure that the thing that you are paying for, you are comfortable with it. That is the price 
you know, equate with the kind of value or the quality that you expect. All right. If you don't take care, one dollar of a product that you're expecting to buy will turn to five dollars. That's why in Ghana, you can buy something for a dollar today. Tomorrow, when you come, they'll tell you that it is three dollars. I did an interview with a Chinese woman of which she said that in China, they do the same thing. You need to take your time and bargain with people to make sure that you are okay with the price that you are paying. And number five. This I see as a culture shock to them. It's a culture shock. We're talking about public toilets. Public toilets. 21st century second decade, I'm in Ghana, should have been one of the few African countries where, you know, individuals or each and every household should have their private toilet for them to, you know, um, um, to use comfortably. But here we are in first century, second decade, we, we do still have public toilets. Just recently that, you know, the nature of the public toilet have changed a bit where some private institutions or private entities are venturing into the business to making sure that in as much as, you know, there'll be public toilets, but they're going to pay for it because they're going to, you know, have this cleanliness, quality of the facilities and all that. Previously, the public toilets were having bad condition. In some parts of Ghana, these public toilets have private entities running them. So they have the best people to take care of the facility to make sure that those who enjoy the facility, you know, um, um, are happy to enjoy the facility. And that is not about that of which Dan shared. Dan was trying to say that in the Western world of which she comes from, there's nothing like a public toilet. With the whole experience about seeing people lined up, just going to use the restroom as something sort of shocking. And that is what Dan actually understand. But to some of us, this is normal. It's normal. Now, let us go to what Dan likes about Ghana. I mean, the whole experience, what Dan likes about Ghana, which corresponds to what the media or the Western media didn't tell her that Ghana is happy. Number one, the weather. It's amazing. Always warm. No matter what time of day, and the golden hour is so beautiful. Okay. The warmness of the weather will welcome you. Just as, you know, in the states where most of the year you're going to experience cold, in Africa, you're going to mostly experience the warm weather. And that is why when the tourists come, they used to have sun bath and all that. So it is favorable to this tourist. As she compared to where she's coming from, she should be wearing all these winter coats and all that. But when she comes to Africa, a place like Ghana, she feels free to be wearing these shorts, dresses and all that. And that is what she likes about it. Number two. The food, of course, and especially my favorite cantonment. Delicious foods or cuisines. There is no way you come to Ghana without tasting about two or three foods, two or three particular foods. That is our Ghana jollof, our PC, and bangkun. These two to three foods, there is no way you are going to visit Ghana without tasting them. And according to them, she likes our PC and she likes our jollof. I think one of her contents on TikTok, she posted a content where she was preparing jollof. I think when she went to the UK or something, yeah. She prepared a Ghana jollof. And according to her, she's going to continuously be preparing and preparing our food till she becomes a master of it so that she will also get the opportunity to teach, you know, um, her friends or their family. Number three, the beautiful nature and this breathtaking landscape. Dal was also blown away by Ghana's beautiful landscapes. According to her, the place is breathtaking and, and, you know, beautiful. But the thing is, I've realized that most tourists find this kind of normal tourism to be cool. I mean, I don't have anything bad to say. But I think that the tourists that we come to Ghana should try and experience something different. Most of you, when you come to Ghana, you lodge in either, in either at the eastern region or maybe in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Sometimes you need to travel as possible and go to the western region where you experience Kapum National Park, you experience Hajj Fans Hotel Brutel, you go to uh, Ankoba Beach Resort, it should be closer to nature. There are many places that most tourists have not explored and those are the natural things that hardly would you get in the States, especially those who are wanting to visit Ghana this coming December 
try as much as possible to experience or to explore something really different. It's not about enjoying our beautiful landscape. It is good. But try as much as possible, come to the western region of Ghana where enjoy the nature or something that will draw closer to nature. All right? Number four. Will the lovely please Ghanaians who love enjoyment. You even know how to turn a funeral into a part. According to them, Ghanaians are really peaceful, welcoming, hospitable, fun to be with. And it's something that people do say. It's just like a cliche. Any Ghanaian or most of the Ghanaians that you meet, they are really great people and wanting to help people. According to the Global Peace Index, Ghana is the fifth African country to be peaceful and the 51st in the whole world to be peaceful. And it is something that has been tested and proven. All right. So, I mean, them talking about Ghanaians, we being peaceful, we being this, we being, uh, being all that. It is something that we were nurtured to be. We were nurtured to be that when you meet a visitor or any of any, your brother or your sister, no matter their skin color, try as much as possible to help the person or to be at peace with the person. So that, what you are saying, is true. And number five. My pool. I really miss my pool. Everyone who knows me knows how much I love swimming. Number five of the things down the sea of Ghana is her swimming pool. Wow. I mean, I think it's good. But I recommend that when you come to Ghana, forget about those swimming pools. All right. Go to the beaches. When you go to Labadi Beach, the place is very unique, very welcoming. The serenity of the place, the breeze would even, even help you connect to nature. I mean, swimming pool is just a man made thing. Go and experience the natural beaches in Ghana. Okay, just as I was saying, when you go to the western region of Ghana, you can go to Ankoba Beach Resort. You can go to, you know, the traditional beaches that when you go, you're going to feel at home. A place where you can have a sun bath and everything and enjoy anything on everything at peace. So, these are some of the things that Dan, that is the female musician or the music producer who visited Ghana, found, you know, liking or disliking about Ghana. Just as we always sit here and talk about that, forget about what the Western media tells you. Visit Africa or Ghana for yourself. In as much as she shared her whole experience about what she likes and what she dislikes, most of the things that of which she displayed in the short videos are really true. I am not saying they are not true. They are true. But it is good for you to come and experience things for yourself so that you'll be able to know indeed that whatever they are programming you to believe is really true fact or not. So let me know what you think about the video. Follow them on TikTok at Dam. TikTok and Dam. Or go to the YouTube video description and find a link to her channel. Let me know what you think about the video. My name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time in another episode. So good to my end day. <laughs>